Some have called her entitled for scolding fans, but no one can confidently say that they have not been moved by Miranda Lambert's authenticity and powerful voice. Her incredible talent has allowed her to convey songs that tackle tough topics like domestic violence, heartbreak, and self-empowerment with such emotional depth and intensity that she is able to truly connect with fans on an emotional level. This incredible ability to draw from her personal experiences has set her apart. And as we take a look at Miranda's journey, we get a glimpse at the tragic struggle that lies under the surface of the glamorous world of music and fame. Miranda Lee Lambert came into the world on November 10, 1983 in Longview, Texas. Her parents Rick and Bev Lambert named her Lucy Miranda after her great-grandmother. Her father, Rick, was a former Dallas police officer in the 1970s. He was also a guitarist and songwriter and even had a country rock group called Contraband. After the birth of his daughter, Rick and his wife started their private detective business in Longview, and here they raised Miranda. Rick and Bev were good at their work and soon found success. By the time their daughter was seven, she too was part of the team, brought in on special cases. The family built a new house, had a second child, two cars, dogs, and some livestock. Everything was going well until the oil crash, which broke the Texas economy at the end of that decade, and everyone was affected. Work stopped coming in, and soon, the family lost it all. To start over, they moved to Lindale, a small town Bev chose for a school system she liked. She rented some farmland to hold their livestock and enrolled Miranda in the first grade. While the children and the animals got better, Rick got worse. He was a broken man and was getting depressed. He regularly undertook the long journey to Dallas to look for work, but he fell deeper into depression. They had rented a small rat-infested house that they had fixed up to at least make it livable. Every day, Bev took Miranda to school and she would return to the farm to feed her animals and pray. Her prayer, God, give me the ground under my feet. Only a few months later, Bev prayers were answered when an old preacher offered her a better house for less rent if she would help renovate a much larger farmhouse. According to Bev, the old man had heard from God. After being in Lindale for a while, Bev and Rick were hired by the lawyers for Paula Jones to investigate Bill Clinton. And for two and a half years, the two worked hard to get the files that were eventually used to subpoena Clinton. The financial success of completing such a high-profile job allowed the husband and wife to begin a faith-based ministry that offered their home as a shelter for the victims of domestic violence and their children. Miranda said, We always had tons of people at our house. It's just an old farmhouse. My friends who lived in the city had swimming pools and four-wheelers and all that. We lived out in the country with a vegetable garden, yet they were always going. Let's go to your house. I would think, why? Now I realize that it was because at my house it was so homey. We took in just everybody. All this while she was in school. And even though her grades weren't the best, she worked hard and was a committed young girl in other aspects of her life. She participated actively in her church band. When she was 10, her father had taken her to a Garth Brooks show at the peak of the Brooks career. And when Miranda returned home with her father, she said to her father, Daddy, I would like to do that someday. At this point, she had only sung in the praise band in church. Her father told her she had the ability to, and soon after that, he started trying to push her to learn how to play the guitar. But Miranda just wasn't interested. He eventually got her a guitar when she was 14, and still, she wasn't into it. According to her father, Miranda was dancing, cheerleading, and doing all the things young girls get involved in with their peers. Like other teenagers, her high school years included negative experiences. She battled with her appearance and self-worth. Her usual outfit of wide pants and t-shirts combined with a complete lack of makeup contributed to her self-described hideous look. Although her lack of fashion sense during her teenage years might have made her unhappy, her family's love was enough to make up for that deficit. Growing up with her brother Luke, she experienced a unique blend of affection and support. Even though her parents' private investigation business brought other challenging elements into their lives, though there wasn't any physical harm to them, the impact of her parents' work placed an emotional burden on Miranda and her brother. But instead of bringing the kids down, it only made them stronger. By the time she was 16 and heard the radio ad for the True Value Country Showdown, she was confident enough to participate in it. She told her parents that she wanted to enter, 
so they helped her record two of her father's original songs with this, she was accepted into the competition. She lost, but she got great feedback, and this was enough to encourage her. She made her professional singing debut on the Johnny High Country Music Review in Arlington, Texas. This was the same talent show that had helped launch the career of Leanne Rimes. After attending a musical seminar, she decided to go to Nashville to cut a demo, but she wasn't happy with the experience. She had been forced to record only pop type of music, and she became frustrated with it saying the songs were awful and cheesy. She recalled what happened after, I cried in the studio. My dad spent $6,000 to do those demos, and we didn't have $6,000 at all. It was terrible, but he says it was a cheap lesson because I learned in three hours what I wanted to do. Miranda eventually left the studio and returned home to ask her father to teach her how to play guitar so that she could write her own songs. She immediately started writing songs. She explained the sudden ability, it's the only thing that's ever come naturally to me. I had to work at everything. I sucked in school. I sucked at sports except for softball, but I had to work at that. I was a cheerleader, but always had to stay after. Music was the first thing I did where I was naturally talented. It was while she was still in high school that she formed her The Texas Pride Band. They landed their first professional singing engagement in Dallas at Deep Ellum's Gypsy Tea Room. After that, Miranda began performing with the band as the house band of the legendary Rio Palm Isle Ballroom in Longview, 45 miles from home. There, she had to perform four hours a night for three nights a week. She would often get back to Lindale around 4 a.m., then get up for school in the morning. Miranda stated, My parents were shocked about how passionate I was about it, but they basically dropped everything and just gave it everything they had. I learned so many songs. I learned how to deal with fans and drunks. It was a crash course and I had to learn really fast. She acknowledged that at this point, her uncertain future was the main cause of her concern. She expressed a sense of fear about what lay ahead, saying, I would tell my 17-year-old self that it's all going to be okay. Her mother began researching talent contests. She eventually got one in Dallas, which led to a contract with an agency that got Miranda a small role in a Ruffles potato chip ad and work in the 2001 teen comedy movie, Slapper She's French. In Nashville, Miranda also came in second out of 400 competitors for the role of Tammy Wynette in the musical Stand By Your Man. That same year, she released her self-titled debut album, which consisted of 10 tracks. Her father funded the $2,000 CD showcasing the songs, and her brother Luke created a website to sell it. And her mother drove her to radio stations and clubs to promote it and to get her bookings. The family even bought a motorhome complete with a sound system and an equipment trailer. After graduating high school early, she devoted herself to music full-time. She said at the time, this is my college. I can't study in a book what I've learned just being out there and doing it. At first, it was hard to break in because the clubs believe chicks don't draw. Plus, they're expecting you to get up there and sing Broken Wing. I don't do that. I'm a guitar player and a writer. Miranda toured on her home state's music circuit throughout 2002 and placed two songs from her CD on the Texas music charts. In January 2003, she entered another talent contest and finished first in the Texas auditions for the nationally telecast Nashville Star Competition. This was when young Miranda left home for the first time and moved to Nashville to appear on the TV series. Five months later, out of 8,000 contestants, she finished third on the show's finale. She worked with winner Buddy Jewell on his Sony CD. Tracy Gershon, a Sony music executive and Nashville star judge, had noticed Miranda during her time on the TV series and persuaded the label to sign her. And on September 15, 2003, Miranda became a Sony artist herself. In appreciating the show that got her signed, Miranda had this to say, I always say that Nashville star saved me from five more years in the honky-tonks. But she also added that she was still scared to death to sign that recording contract. I was afraid they'd change me. I was worried they'd take my songs that didn't sound like anyone else's and produce them just like the next record down the street. I did not want it to be the typical Nashville record. I have my own style. I want to be my own person. There are a million blonde chicks who can sing. I've always wanted to be different. Her solution was simple. Tell the truth as it is or go home. She narrated how the meeting with Sony executives went. We had a meeting. All the Sony people were there. 
I sat down at the head of the table, crossed my hands and said, okay, this is who I am. And I just laid it out. I'm from Texas. I write my own stuff. I have something to say. I'll never dance around on stage in a halter top. I will always play my guitar. Now, if I can't make a record that reflects me honestly, I'd rather just go home and play in Texas like I was. So please tell me now if you're going to be bossing me around. Miranda's heart was in her mouth. But according to her, the next words from the label chief's mouth shocked her. John Grady said, you go make your record. Her debut album, Kerosene, was released in the summer of 2004. 11 of the album's 12 tracks were written by her or with her assistants. The lead single, Me and Charlie Talking, was co-written by her father and Heather Little. And John Grady had stood by his word because Miranda said later, nobody came to the studio. Nobody threw songs at me. A few months later, I played them the tracks. They said, you did an amazing job. It was almost unbelievable, except it was happening to her. Miranda said she kept saying, this can't be real. It's been such an easy road. This whole pathway has been laid out brick by brick. But her conclusion was, that's why I know I'm meant to do this. I'm so excited. I feel like I'm really where it's all starting to happen. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard Top Country Albums charts. Eventually, the RIAA certified it platinum for shipments of over one million copies. Overall, the album produced four top 40 singles on the Billboard country charts, including the title track, a top 20 hit. Miranda also went on tours with Keith Urban, Dirk Bentley, and Toby Keith. In 2005, at the 40th Annual Academy of Country Music Awards in Las Vegas, she won the Cover Girl Fresh Face of Country Music Award. She was also nominated for the Country Music Association's Horizon Award that same year. Her second album, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, was released on May 1, 2007. She wrote eight of the album's 11 tracks, including four singles. The New Yorker said the album proved she has talent and charisma on a par with Dolly Parton, another blonde beauty who was once underestimated. However, there was a problem. Miranda's songs weren't getting into country radio. Those who were observing the music scene at the time found it surprising that her singles never reached higher than number 15 on Billboard's Hot Country chart. Her inability to enter the top part of the singles charts was definitely frustrating. She stated, I really don't understand radio at all. I don't feel like I'm too edgy or out there. A million people don't. I don't know what I could do differently. And if I did anything differently, I wouldn't be me. So I'm not going to, but I'm really frustrated. In response to why Miranda's music wasn't charting in the top tens, Greg Swedberg, program director for country station Key at the time, gave an answer. He stated that Miranda was one of the most talented females they had, and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was an awfully good record. He suspected that anybody who bought the album would be really happy they did, yet he didn't think there was anything like a hit on the CD. In his words, I hear 11 really good songs, but I don't think there's a giant anthem. Gunpowder Lead is one of the nastiest songs I've heard in any genre, and I love it. But I don't think it's a number one record because it's too angry. Despite her songs not reaching the top percentile of country radio, Miranda received a Grammy Award nomination for Best Female Country Vocal Performance for her single Kerosene. She also won the Top New Female Vocalist Award at the 2007 Academy of Country Music Awards. At the 2008 edition, her second album, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, won Album of the Year. The following year, she released her third album, Revolution, on September 29, 2009. She co-wrote 11 of the album's 15 tracks. Other co-writers on the album included Dave Haywood and Charles Kelly of Lady Antebellum and Blake Shelton. Miranda's third revolution upon its release received a lot of praise from the likes of Rolling Stone, Boston Globe and Slant Magazine. Entertainment Weekly called the release the best mainstream country album so far this year. She sang her new single, Dead Flowers, at the 44th Annual Academy of Country Music Awards on April 5th, 2009 and released it almost a month later. It was a top 40 hit. The album's second single, White Liar, was released on August 17th and debuted at number 50 on the US Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. But by February 2010, White Liar became Miranda's first top five hit. 
reaching a peak of number two on the U.S. Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. Then the album's third single, The House That Built Me, was released the following month, and it became a number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot Country Songs chart, where it stayed for four weeks. It received an RIAA Platinum certification on July 8th. Miranda had achieved what many had termed impossible, but it still wasn't over. Her album's fourth single, Only Prettier, and its accompanying music video went viral. It featured cameo appearances by fellow country artists Kelly Pickler, Laura Bell Bundy, and Hilary Scott of Lady Antebellum. By December, Only Prettier reached a peak of number 12 on the U.S. Billboard Hot Country Songs chart, giving Miranda her seventh top 20 hit. Finally, she released the fifth and final single of the Revolution album, Heart Like Mine, and it became her second number one hit on the country charts. By the end of 2010, Miranda had gotten a record nine CMA Award nominations. She performed at the 44th Annual Country Music Association Awards and won the CMA Award for Female Vocalist of the Year, and her Revolution won Album of the Year. Very early the following year, Miranda started the year with a bang, winning a Grammy Award in the Best Female Country Vocal Performance category for The House That Built Me. In 2012, she decided to embark on a new project, the girl group Pistol Annie's. The members included her, Ashley Monroe and Angelina Presley. They released their single Hell on Heels in May and their debut album Hell on Heels a few months later. The album debuted at number one on Billboard's country chart. On February 8, 2012, fans were shocked to see Miranda on NBC's long-running legal drama, Law Order Special Victims Unit, in an episode titled Father's Shadow. This was her acting debut, although she later said she was a big fan of the show. When asked if she had become an actress, she answered, I never wanted to act. I still don't. I don't want to be an actress. I just wanted to be on that show mainly so I could be a groupie for their autographs. True to her words, she returned to music and released her fifth album, Platinum, in 2014. Two years later, she released her sixth studio album, The Weight of These Wings, and the third Pistol Annie's album. In March 2016, she performed her first ever show outside the US and Canada as one of the headliners of Country to Country, Europe's biggest country music festival. Miranda played alongside Dwight Yoakam, Thomas Rhett, and Ashley Monroe, touring from England to Scotland and Ireland. On her return in 2019, her seventh album, Wild Card, came out. The album went on to be nominated for both ACM and CMA Album of the Year and won the 2021 Grammy for Best Country Album. In 2021, Miranda released a collaborative and new project, The Marfa Tapes, which she did with long-term friends John Randall and Jack Ingram. The media even labeled this as her best work yet. She then released her ninth studio album, Palomino, and Pistol Annie's Christmas album. Despite her incredible success in music and business, Miranda has had her ups and downs in love. She and singer Blake Shelton first connected at the CMT 100 Greatest Duets concert in 2005. She also provided backup vocals for his rendition of Michael Bublé's song, Home, which shot to the top of the Hot Country Songs list. Following a four-year dating relationship, Shelton proposed to Miranda on May 9, 2010, in the woods close to her Tishomingo, Oklahoma home. Miranda, who was 27 then, said, I'm just excited to get married because I want to tell Blake I really can love him for the rest of my life and be happy and make him happy. On May 14, 2011, Shelton and Miranda were legally wed. On Saturday night, they exchanged vows at the Don Strange Ranch in Bourne, Texas, located north of San Antonio. The celebration ran late, with guests like Dirks Bentley, Laura Bell Bundy, Catherine Heigl, Josh Kelly, Reba, Kelly Clarkson, and Dirks Bentley. After four years of marriage, Shelton and Miranda announced their divorce on July 20, 2015. They released their statement saying, This was not our image of the future and we each proceed forward at our own pace with heavy hearts. We are actual individuals with actual lives, families, friends, and co-workers. Therefore, in light of this very private circumstance, we respectfully request your privacy and compassion. The last time the public saw them together was at the Greenbrier Classic Music Series in West Virginia. Miranda dated a few more times for a while after. 
Four years after her divorce on January 26, 2019, Miranda shocked her fans by disclosing that, in addition to a new romance, she had recently wed Brendan McLaughlin in secret. I wanted to offer some news in celebration of Valentine's Day. My life's love has arrived, and we tied the knot. She posted on Instagram with two adorable pictures from their joyous day. She added, my heart is overflowing. Thank you, Brendan McLaughlin, for loving me for me. Brendan McLaughlin welcomed a child from a prior relationship who was born in November 2018. This made Miranda the stepmother of a three-month-old baby. While enjoying her new family, in 2023, Miranda co-authored a cookbook titled Y'all Eat Yet. Welcome to the Pretty Bee Asterisk Titchen Kitchen with Holly Gleason for Day Street Books. Another change in her life that year was the fact that she left Sony Music Nashville after 19 years. In April 2024, she announced that she had signed a joint deal with Republic Records and Big Loud. She also said the first single under the new contract, Wranglers, which was released on May 3, 2024, would serve as the lead single to her 10th studio album, Postcards from Texas. The promotional single, Damn It Randy, was released on June 28, 2024, a song she co-wrote with her husband, Brendan. Miranda had passed through it all, from the child who dared to dream and chase her dreams, to the teenager who never backed down to the woman who never allowed a broken marriage to break her. She has held on to herself and overcome every challenge to start this new chapter with Brendan. Fans can't wait to see her flourish.